Right here we go, a uh, sharp and sleek cut. So I'll just, um, after shampooing, I'll comb the hair to natural fall. And to the sides, I'll separate the right side from the parietal area. And here my sections, they're slightly diagonal. So I, from here, I go in and I cut in a slightly graduated angle. So my angle is quite steep. I'm looking at probably like 85 degrees. So it's just a little bit below layering. Now, and the reason why I chose a higher acute angle is because I want to remove, I want to have like that short hair, less long hair theory, in addition to the benefit of layers, so like removal of weight. So that's why I chose to use a higher, a steeper angle of graduation through the sides. Okay, just working through the sides, um, make sure that you're working with slightly diagonal sections, that your fingers are also slightly diagonal, and then you line up that cone and comb the hair super straight out from the roots to your guideline. Now this, this is really imperative and you have to comb the hair straight out. So another way your comb can greatly assist you, one thing that I have started doing is that see with this new section, I'll place my comb right, at the, right on the section. So it's part of that section and the entire tone, comb touches the head shape. Then from there I'll pull straight out. So my comb can also assist me with combing the hair, ensuring that I comb the hair from roots to guidelines super clean when the hair is parallel to the teeth. And also I can match up the comb to the section and just pull out from there. So again, it gives me that 80-20 into reality. So using my comb in more than one ways, I save a lot of time and effort. And always working with manageable sections. So here my section reaches a point where the head starts to round. So at this point, I'll start to over direct slightly, which will allow me to build up a corner. And as I'm cutting, make sure that fingers, elbows, sections, comb, scissors, they're all parallel. And I'm standing directly in front of what I'm cutting here. So again, by keeping these five key details in play throughout the strokes and the cut portion, my my skill sets improve dramatically. Just again, it's the tools that you're using, your mindset and the body position helps a lot. So now again, through the top here, notice my over direction. So from the crown to the occipital bone, I, I hear I, my intention is to build weight. So here I'm still combing the hair straight out, very steep graduated angle. And then from the occipital bone to the nape area, I'll go in and I cut in a lower degree of graduation so I can change my shape so my angle changes at the occipital bone. So from the occipital bone below, I have a shorter acute angle. From the occipital bone above, I have a higher and my transition point again is at that occipital bone and also notice the over direction. So the over direction here to the top, my lengths, I start to build and gain length. So again, cutting in that steep angle and right there. At the occipital bone, this is where I'll transition. So I change the angle of my comb. My fingers follow my comb and I go in and I change my angle just slightly. So that graduation below the occipital bone will give that lift. And then from the occipital bone to the crown area, I'm removing a lot of weight with that lift. So it gives me more, it makes my shape fully. I'm, I'm elongating the shape from the back. Okay, still working in the same manner. And as I work the back right side, my body position with each section slightly pivots to the left, to the opposite side. So I like combing the hair to my center of balance, to where my chest is, yeah? Okay, and again, from the occipital down, here I'm still building weight, but I'm changing my angle. So everything's fluid and connects. When your hair shape connects, you get tons and tons of movement. With any disconnection, you really lose movement. So imagine if you're driving on a bridge and you're going 100 miles per hour and there's maybe say five meters where the street doesn't connect well you're going down and your movement stops it's the same principle when we cut hair so we have to have make sure that our shape connects to get that fluidity and the movement the so seal over directing and notice how i'm building my length so my shape through the back is well it's pretty intense because from the external sides i go from tighter to longer in the center and plus I have the other geometry from the nape to the crown 
I mean, I'm sorry, from the nape to the occipital bone, and then from the occipital bone to the crown. Okay, so now I'll start off on the left side, and I'll cut the exact same shape. So as I cut the left side, I change my body position, so I'm standing slightly parallel to her ear, so that allows my elbows, it gives me enough like wiggle room to keep my body position consistent. So next, slightly diagonal section, match my comb to my section, and then from there, I'll just pull the hair straight out. Make sure that you comb the hair, and the hair is parallel to the teeth of your comb. That's the best indicator that lets you know, okay, that you're combing the hair properly. And a key point to keep in consideration is that when you're working on super, super thick hair, you have to, well, I'll speak for myself. I have to make sure that I'm always combing the hair super clean. This is a challenge for this, for super thick hair. And that you always work with manageable sections. Maybe if you're finer hair, I could get the same job done with a little less sections. So maybe with thicker hair, you have to take smaller sections and a greater emphasis on the cleanliness of how you control that section, but there are no shortcuts. Otherwise, you'll be doing a bad haircut and once the hair is dry, you have to go and over texturize it and you move the entire shape and it grows out totally awful. Okay, so still approaching the left portion of the haircut with slightly diagonal sections. As I progress towards the back, my body position takes a small step towards the back also. So again, cutting from short to long, a steep graduated angle. Now always make allowances for the ears. And once the hair is dry, I'll go back and I always we always have to polish around the ears because they're I haven't seen a set of ears that are symmetrical and identical, so you'll always have to go back once the hair is dry and just refine that area a bit more. And it takes another additional 15 to 30 seconds. So again here, still cutting my graduation. Now my next section, I'll start to over direct stronger. So this is in preparation for that, where the head starts to round. So here I'll build up my length and my weight via over direction. So my elbow's high, fingers are low. Your elbow position is essential, <sighs> at least for myself. My elbow position is essential. I myself, if I drop my in elbow, my finger angle will change. It always change. It changes every time. But that's me specifically. Maybe others can do it. No, I haven't developed that skill set. So the best way that I've, the best remedy that I've been using for over two decades is my body position, my elbow position. So again, from the occipital bone to the crown, I'm cutting in that high graduation. And then from the occipital bone to the nape, I change my angle and I'm cutting in a steeper graduated shape. Okay, and at the nape area, always have a heightened awareness and be looking out for like crazy jumpy cowlicks because that can totally throw off your shape. Next section again, increasing elevation, over directing slightly. From the occipital bone to the crown, my angle is higher. So notice my finger position, my elbows. And then from here, I'll start to transition. I'll change my angle from the occipital bone into the nape area. And again, when you encounter like monster cowlix at the nape, go in with less tension. And then once the hair is dry, we know where to go back and immediately start to refine. We're still following the guide. And notice how clean I comb the hair from the roots to the ends. This is essential. If I see snags in the line, I have this final like QC that I do right before I close my shears. Um, I visually just run my eyes from roots to ends and just ensure that all the hair that I comb is parallel to the teeth of my comb. And when those are in check, then I'll just like start knocking hair down. If I see snags or my over direction is off, I, I'll, I just have to go back and comb it out that much more perfect. Um, if I try and shortcut that and the hair that I comb isn't super clean, those not super clean areas, they actually will result in longer and shorter lengths than my guideline. So a lot of times the cleanliness of your guideline doesn't necessarily mean that your haircut's perfect. 
for me, the control is all about the way I control the hair, the way I comb it. My right hand with the scissors, it just removes hair. But the actual control comes from my left hand. Comb the hair to a natural fall, make visual assessment, assessments, and here I'll just go and I'm just cleaning out my outline shape a bit. So since my shape is graduated through the back, it makes mathematical sense for my outline to also be graduated. I have a lot of options. Say if I wanted to make her neck look wider, this angle would, would not be as steep. If I want to extend the length of the neck visually, then I'll up the angle. So visually we can kind of, we can play tricks on the eye depending on the lines that we choose to cut in. Okay, so through the top area, I'll comb out my first section and then here every single section will be over directed to that last section to where my weight sits through the side area. Now, this time around my intent is to again build weight. I want to see the sides at the parietal fall quite heavy. So my over direction is exactly to that same point. I could also adapt the shape if I wanted to see a bit more softer. I could elevate each section a bit more each time. So this technique is just a technique, but the technique within itself has millions of different adaptations that you have to throw into the technique. For example, like the angle to the sides, I cut in was about 85, 80 degrees, like an acute angle. I can do the exact same technique, but cut in 30. Or I can go in and cut in, you know, a, a concave, but using the same technique. So these, the technique is one thing, but the small adaptations that we have to make with our technique to suit the needs of our guests, that's the pressure that we have as hairdressers. And that comes from the consultation, from understanding the guests' needs and having a clear intention. Okay, and as I'm connecting the top, notice how my body position changes. When I'm working in the back, I'm standing more towards the back and I work towards the front. I gradually start pivoting, moving my body more forward. So again, this allows me for the best control. Now, just for like shooting video, I'm standing behind the occipital bone. But if I didn't have to stay out the lens of the camera, I would actually, my body position would be about a foot and a half more towards the front. Okay, so the top right is done. So I'll do the same technique on the opposite side. So always again, work in small manageable sections and I connect everything from the back to the front, especially around that crown area, because that area, when it, the hair falls naturally, the hair distribution is enormous. So again, comb, fingers, elbows, scissors, they're all parallel. Pay attention to your over direction. So if you're over directing the hair too far back or too far forward, you will notice that the hair that you comb out is not parallel to the teeth of your comb. When your over direction is on, then the hair is parallel to the teeth of your comb. It's just that simple. And it's just some, just kicking in that little acid into your repertoire will up your game significantly. Because throughout the entire haircut, we always have a comb in our hand and we always have two eyeballs. So we can use these acids that are feasible all the time. Calm, cool, collective approach to cutting. And make sure your stroke is slow enough where you can visually make all these little assessments. So now for the blow dry, I'll just go in and through the back, I'll just flat wrap the hair. I'll push the hair in tons of different directions to encourage movement. And I want a nice fluid flow with the hair. If I only finished off the hair in one direction, the hair would fall a bit artificial or too heavy and rigid. Now through the top, I can flat wrap and I'm going in and leafing. I really won't bevel too much. And I have to be careful just not to get too much root lift because I want a natural finish. And again, just keep on blowing out the hair until you see the shine improve. Once I get to the point where it looks, it's, it's super, 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 super shiny, that's the best indicator that I have visually to let me know, okay, that cuticle's shut, 
the hair is dry. So there's no point in drying dry hair. Then you start to over dry it. So you always have to be careful as to the angle of your nozzle to your brush. When your nozzle's, nozzle's on, the hair comes out shinier. Okay, so now I'll just go back and here I'm removing weight because remember my over direction was quite heavy so of course I'll build weight which is nice because now once the hair is dry I have this open plant where I can go and like refine the weight to what I aesthetically am aiming for so take your time and do it right and again remember through the shape in the back I'm going from the uh, nape to the occipital bone I'm building up weight and then from the occipital bone to the crown, I'm removing weight. So with this in mind, as I texture the hair, I want to texture the hair to that same rhythm. So everything flows. Now just go back, scissor over comb and just polish that nape area just a bit. Just working with the tips of my shears. Remember detail is always exists at the fringe of your shears. And through the back, always give the back additional TLC because after the haircut for the next 68 weeks, half the people, half the time will see your end result from the back. And then again, you have to think from the client's perspective, when the client does put effort into the hair, they can put it in the front because they can't see the back. So I always like to give the back more TLC in the salon because I anticipate for the next, again, six to eight weeks, that back will be neglected. So now going through the sides, I'm just cutting in a super square, clean line. Just working around the ears, hold the ears down, don't cut off the ears. That will lower your retention. Refining the shape through the back, where the back and the sides meet. Now this, the steepness of the angle is up to you. A steeper angle will pull the eye, a softer angle will flow a little bit more fluid. And as you're working these details, I recommend that once you've worked your line to your point of satisfaction, take a deep breath, take a step back and start visually assessing your refinement from different angles. So look at it from the side, look at it from the front, look at it from an angle from high to low, an angle from low to high, and always be looking for to critique your own work. So that way you can go back and just polish it again and then your, that line will become even that much more perfect. Because when we're focusing on a line that's very close to our eyes, um, we're working at one perspective. But then as you have to remember, as you finish a haircut, your end result, the masses will see that same line from a multiple different points of view. So go back with the multiple point of view in mind and just polish that line just a bit more. Okay, and here I'm working through the top, just texturizing, because remember the top, I over-directed the hair, so it will fall super, 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 super heavy. So now I have the option to keep or remove heaviness by the amount of texture, or I can go in and I can cut a, a line that removes a corner, and then that will fall a lot softer, and then I can refine it. So it gives me, there's more in play right here and I have more control over the end result, especially now that the hair is dry, and I can take into consideration how the hair naturally falls 24-7, 365. And I like to work the hair to the point where it feels nice, smooth, and comfortable to comb or push your hair with your fingers from roots to the ends. For me, that's the best indicator that, okay, the shape is on and I've texturized enough. As you, as you run your comb and your fingers through the hair, you can actually, if you're aware, you can feel the density and the balance of the shape through your fingers or your comb. Because I want the client to be able to go back and comb the hair and like, wow, now it's so smooth that every, when everything checks and the distribution of weight is on. Okay, and there we have it. Enjoy.